Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Um, but on this channel, I'm going to be posting every other Wednesday and every Sunday. So on Wednesdays, I'm going to be posting serial killer like story times, and uh, Sundays, I'll post any other story time you guys want me to do. Just Today, I'm going to be talking about Paul Michael Stefani. So, Paul Michael Stefani was also known as the Weepy Voice Killer, um, known for making phone calls to police about his crimes in a like a whiny, weepy voice, um, anonymously. So in between 1980 and 1982, he murdered five women, or tried to murder five women. His victims were Kimberly, Kathleen, Barbara, Karen, and Denise are his five victims. He was born September 8, 1944 in Austin, Minnesota. Um, he grew up on a five-anchor plot with his mother, stepfather, and his ten other siblings. He I mean his nine other siblings, he's just one to ten, sorry. His mother remarried when he was only three years old and Paul said his stepfather was kind of abusive, which he could be lying because he was a serial killer, but we never know. After he graduated, he actually moved job to job and he got a wife and he had a kid, but later they um, divorced because he found out that the wife uh, banded his kid. 20 year old Karen was a university student and she was going to um, St. Paul to visit her sister for a New Year's Eve party. And after midnight hit, Karen um, was obviously drunk and she actually went out to around the city. I don't know why her sisters didn't. I don't know. At 3 a.m., a phone call was made from a man asking for an ambulance in a squat car. A phone call was made by Paul um, himself but it was made after um, beating Karen and leaving her severely hurt and even cracking her skull open. Police found her by a railroad um, by the, the manufacturing company and the manufacturing company was actually Paul's old job that he got fired from. So police do believe that he went in there, out there in anger and just saw Karen, but we never know. But she did survive. Uh, she survived after all that, but she did not remember the incident because of her en head injuries. I cannot talk. June 3rd, 1981, Paul made a new victim. 18-year-old um, student Kimberly Compton, I think I said it right, went to Mickey's for breakfast, and there Paul was having breakfast. So they talked for a little bit. They kind of hit it off, and Paul said, hey, you can go around the city, and I can check out some things. Right, so not even 15 uh, minutes later, she was found dead. She was found by a group of teen boys by like uh, on Maid Road. So they were just playing, I guess, and they found her body. Um, she was stabbed 61 times with a ice pick. And after she was found, Paul actually called the police again anonymously and she was just having being remorseful and he said like while he was talking he was like yeah i killed her with a, a ice pick and the story has not been released to the media because i don't know it hasn't been that long and they didn't need to but only the killer would have known it was she was killed by an ice pick so they're like oh crap this is the killer they try to trace it but it was too short so they couldn't really trace it. July 21st, 1982, he made his next attack. Um, she was 33 year old Kathleen. So the day she was actually killed, um, she was supposed to go on vacation with her friend. Kathleen was found dead. Um, there was no phone call but from Paul himself, which um, he's like, he's known for like calling after he murdered, so like they weren't sure if it was him yet. Um, his next attack was on the morning of August 6, uh, 1982, which is, was was his last year of killing. Spoiler alert. Uh, paper boy was just doing his routine route delivering his papers when he spotted a dead body along like the Mississippi River Bank. It was a 40 year old Barbara Simon. She was stabbed over 100 times with an ice pick or a screwdriver because um, the stab wounds were circular. Witnesses said she was at a bar with him and they hit it off and he was, he took her and she said to the bartender like, I hope this guy's okay. I need a ride home because she was kind of drunk because it was at a bar. And then she was found dead. Um, but the waitresses and bartenders actually like 
um, like found the main suspect because they were in a lineup. So they were like, oh, it's this dude, you know? They had the main suspect, so they were kind of like keeping a watch on him, right? But they lost him. They couldn't find where he was. So several hours later, um, a man called saying a woman has been stabbed with a screwdriver. Like he witnessed Paul doing that. Um, she was 19 year old Denise Williams and she was stabbed 13 times, but she survived. And to get away, she actually found a glass bottle and she hit him in the head, pa, period, um, allowing her to escape. So she, obviously Paul had the bad thing on him. So he called the police and said, I need an ambulance. And the person on the other line and the police, oh, it's this guy, Paul. Stefani, I gotta call the police and they gotta track this crap. So they tracked it and they arrested him, period. Like, oh my God, this has been going around for two years. He didn't get caught, two years. Well, at trial, um, he pleaded not guilty. For Denise Williams, he pleaded not guilty, um, but they obviously knew he was guilty because of everything. So he still went to jail. Um, he actually had cancer. He, confessed to everything um after he knew he wasn't gonna last long so he confessed to everything like and um the girl who was gonna go on vacation actually was the victim was a victim um even though he did not call and died in 1998 of cancer so that is the case of um paul michael stefani it's a short one but it actually I picked this one because it happened in my state, um, which is interesting. I didn't know what else to like search up, so I just started, ha, huh, with some serial killers that killed in my state. So I live in Minnesota, and honestly, Austin's not too far from where I live, so that's actually kind of creepy. If you want more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell, and make sure you comment down below what story time I should do for Sunday because I don't know.